implementing the party schedule and timetable ahead of the state elections, which will be the first test of the party strength on the ballot after the general election. The candidates screened are already fancying their chances of clinching the governorship ticket to carry the flag of the party into the governorship contest. They are hopeful that the crisis which seems to be tearing the party apart will not affect their chances on election day. And so far, the party has screened 13 aspirants from Imo State, 9 from Bayelsa State and 2 from Kogi State. All right, now let's uh, go back to our interview. Uh, I'm joined by the membership candidate of Labour Party in the March 18 election in Enugu State, Chijoke Doga, for discussion on politics in the Southeast State. Thank you very much for joining us again, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, now let's start uh, with outcome of the governorship election in Enugu State. How will you describe it? The outcome of the election, with regards to the governorship election, uh, was absolutely not in consonance with the wishes of the majority of the lawful voters in Enugu State as was clearly expressed on the voting day, and as can be clearly deduced from the facts on the ground with regards to the successes recorded by the Labour Party in the previous election. For instance, the, uh, the first election was the National Assembly election that also had the presidency. LP won seven House of Rep seats out of the eight available in the United States. LP won one Senate seat out of the three available. Eventually, on uh, the, next, the, the scheduled day, LP won another senatorial seat, which means that LP has two senatorial seats in the state out of the three available. There are 24 Houses of Assembly seats in the state. LP currently has 14 in its kitty. So if you look at uh, that trend, you know that uh, Enugu State has become an LP state. And on the day of the governorship election, 16 LGAs had come in out of the 17 Enugu states. And LP governorship candidate, Chijoke Doaga, was coasting home to victory with a clear lead of more than 11,000 votes. Then the result from the 17th LGA in Kano East came in very late. In Kano East has no reason at all to come in very late because Nkano East is one of the LGAs that is closest to the Enugu center, the secretariat where INEC is. Nkano East is not the farthest LGA, it's the nearest. Nkano East is one of the least in terms of population, numerical strength, or registered voters. Nkano East turned in 30,000 votes. Immediately, the, the agents for LP challenged that outcome and said it was not in consonance with the Bivans report as was available on our, con on our control room. It was not in consonance with the electoral history of uh, Nkano East, especially with regards to the two other ele the elections I had before. So that uh, objection was uh, sustained, and um, I understand that Abuja intervened, and resort coalition was taken to Abuja. And for three days, Enugu State was waiting. There was a pause. And then later, an envelope was given to the returning officer to announce. And the returning officer, Prosiwe, clearly told the whole world, and the video is available, the relation stopped, and matters were taken to Abuja, that Edoga, the governorship candidate, was not represented. There was no agent of LP in Abuja. Up to now, there is no reason at all, no explanation of what happened in Abuja. What happened is that an envelope was handed over to UA. 
and asked him to announce. And he said he was announcing according to the instruction that he received. And what happened is that uh, out of the 30,000 voters that PDP, working in conjunction with uh, electoral officers in Enugu, ascribed to his governorship, Abuja, on his own accord, shaved about uh, 14,000 or thereabouts and left 16,000. The basis for the soul shaving, we don't know. But what happened is that uh, KPDP now got a lead of about 3,000 over the LP. And uh, since that thing was announced, Enugu State has been in the morning. It has been gloom all over Enugu State. So that's uh, a brief summary of where we are now. All right, so I, I see that you have Thank approached you. Uh, the governorship election petition tribunal to declare you the winner of that election. What are your prayers? Uh, basically, uh, basically, uh, three players, three prayers. We have said clearly that uh, the governorship candidate for PDP is not even, should have been on the ticket because he was not qualified to run for governorship. Having submitted a forged NYC discharge certificate in, in, post, in, a, in, a, in the course of his um, nomination for governorship, the form that he submitted to INEC, he submitted a form, attached a form, from, purportedly from NYC, claiming that he, he, he had done his NYC successfully. We have since found out that that document, even NYC, has stated categorically in writing that that document is, uh, is, uh, is um, forged. And even before the governorship election, that matter had trended seriously. But um, nothing was done by the PDP. So secondly, we're also saying that if you do a proper arithmetic, mathematics of all the votes, proper mathematics of all the votes that uh, were cast, it, um, my uh, LP, Chijo Kedaga, will win. That tabulation has been done. It was we, we dictated areas clearly of, uh, of uh, obvious and deliberate uh, switching of figures. We have places where the vote, the polling, the polls that are collected are the polling units. You have the, the uh, LP votes. Winning LP winning uh, PDP consistently, but at the collation point, these votes were sw were switched. So the votes that I won, especially in the local government, several of them were deliberately moved to to PDP in order to give PDP victory. So we're asking that this um, uh, deliberate error or mistake or miscalculation at the at the point of collation should be corrected. We also have questions with what happened in Nkano East. Nkano East, where Beaver's collection was 15,000 and uh, an acquisition was around 15,000 and then 30,000 was given in favor of uh, PDP. PDP and the Israelites, and the, the, these big men, took the matter to Abuja, where they became the judge and the jury, and slashed 16,000. We still have issues with the ones they left behind. Because we have evidence that collations were not done, that beavers were bypassed, and, and votes were allocated far and above um, what was accredited in several places, you know, Owo and uh, Walker and some other areas. So we have um, we applied the law to these areas of our voting, and we're asking the court to apply the law, the Electoral Act, that areas where they are over voting, they should also be cancelled. So our, our submission to the panel is not too complicated. It's, in fact, it's almost simple and but precise. Right. That the man, the Guba candidate of PDP, was not qualified ab initio. Secondly, right. there were areas of miscalculation or misalignment for figures. Mm -hmm. And if you do the proper arithmetic, you will see that PDP won by more than 5,000 votes. That's our simple prayer. Well, those are our prayers. All right, Thank so you. while we await um, the outcome of that, you know, analysts thought that um, obese popularity will swing the vote in favor of Labour Party candidates. 
What do you think went wrong after the party won the presidential election in the state? No, nothing went wrong because we won. We won. Nothing went wrong. We won. We won the one that uh, our president will be contested. We, we got 78%. We got one of the highest uh, returns in, in, in Nigeria. 78% of the votes were cast for uh, our presidential candidate. And we, was, we won, we were swept the National Assembly elections, as I've said earlier. Out of uh, eight House of Rep seats, we won seven. Out of 24 House of Assembly seats, we won 14. Out of two senatorial, three senatorial seats, we won two. So that's, uh, there's, so that uh, logically and uh, reasonably, that, um, that uh, um, winning streak should continue because for a long time, the Enugu state people have really lost, lost it with the uh, PDP, especially uh, the most important, the most significant being the, the manner in which the presidential uh, issues were determined in PDP in a way that didn't take into consideration, into consideration the voting history of the Southeast or Enugu state people in support of PDP. So basically, the people of Enugu state have lost it with PDP. And the uh, obese entrance, and the way we, can, we conducted our campaign. I am the only candidate uh, out of the, all the candidates who told virtually all the, all the awards in Enugu State. There are 260 awards in Enugu State. I told, I went to more than 240 awards in Enugu State. Sometimes a, a particular award will see me going there two or three times or more, depending on how, what, how, what I ascribe to that place in terms of potency or viability. So I, we had prepared that, ground, that the Enugu State ground for an LP victory. And that LP victory was, was recorded, was achieved, notwithstanding the oppositions, the, the weaponization of the council chairman, the deployment of talks, the use of money, the several other things we had we used to thwart the wishes of Enugu State people. But they all failed because we won. Then at the time when collation was going on, Abrakadabar was done, uh, announcement of results were suspended and taken to Abuja. I don't even know why now. Why that matter? How could go to Abuja? I don't even know the legal basis why collation should be suspended and taken to Abuja. I would like Inek to tell me the legal basis on which collation will stop in Enugu State and the matter has taken to Abuja. The agent is not there, the party is not represented, and votes are shelved according to their own whims and caprices and then returned to the way to announce. So uh, we, there's nothing. There, there was a consist, there's a consistency between our performance in the, in the presidential election and the subsequent performances. Nothing has changed except that the wishes of our people uh, is being thwarted. Efforts are ongoing now to thwart the wishes of our people, as were expressed on the day of the governorship election. But we're not going to accept it. We are challenging it, right. and we are going to challenge it. Make sure All right, that Mr. Edioga, are, I know you. I, I, I know realize. you understand that uh, until the tribunal or the court says otherwise, uh, Peter Mba remains the governor-elect in Enugu State. So, for the basis of this um, interview, now you came second after the PDP governorship candidate, Peter Mba. What would you say? There was no edge. We won. It's just a question of what is written down. If you count the votes properly, we won. The election should be announced. It was a, a different outcome was announced. We don't accept that he won. We don't accept it at all. If you do a proper mathematics of the vote cast, we won. So we don't accept that he won at all. It's just uh, something that Abuja, Abuja, uh, you know, somebody can, you know, the law is the law. You can't sit down in a place and give yourself votes higher than what is accredited, higher than what beef has captured. If you allow that thing to continue, the next elections will not hold anywhere because you just act in breach of the law. You sit in a place. That is why beavers came. That is why the electoral law was amended to make sure that uh, such um, obvious uh, anomalies don't happen, become the norm. You can't stay in one place and give yourselves figures that not in consonance with accreditation, not in consonance with beavers, not in consonance with any voting. You know, you just write something and submit and announce. So it's not right, and we're not going to allow it to, be, to continue because it means right, the destruction so, the, of the credibility of the vote in any state and in Nigeria. Okay, then. So how can your party spread its victory in Abia State to other southeast states and beyond? 
How can the party do what? How can your party, the Labour Party, spread um, its victory in Abia states to other southeast states and beyond? We are going to reclaim our victory. We are definitely going to reclaim our victory in Enugu states. Definitely. And uh, we, are going to, we are going to work very hard in Enugu states because Enugu state elections, the other elections are coming up. This is just the first major outing of the Labour Party. And you know that elections have been challenged everywhere in, in Lagos, in Rivers. Several other places. So some successes may still be recorded, and they will take it on from there. But uh, we are positive that um, uh, OT's good uh, works, which I'm confident will happen, will also continuously endear LP to Nigerians as the party to go to, the party of choice, a party that uh, breaks away from the mold of uh, both APC and uh, PDP. We want a new party, we want a new beginning, we want a new orientation, Something new and fresh and uh, interesting and enlightening. You know, so we are going to take it gradually, grow gradually. Our performances are good works. Even those who are already going to National Assembly, for sure, they are good works. We'll endear them to the uh, Inu people, the Abia people, the right, Imo so, people, uh, uh, gradually. Okay. Now, the election has come and gone, but what would you suggest uh, Indigo should do after this year's election towards ensuring that the zone is not further marginalized? Sorry, I didn't hear you very well. I'm sorry about that. What would you suggest Indigo should do uh, to make sure, after this year's election, to make sure that the zone is not further marginalized? Okay, our zone is not marginalized. It's, yes. le it's left to it's left to Ni it's left to Nigeria, it's left to Nigeria, it's left to Nigeria, it's left to Nigeria to make sure that Nigeria becomes an inclusive country, a country of inclusion, not a country of winner take it all, and a country of empathy. This is a country that has federal character, that has quota system, that has all uh, arrangements that accommodate all sorts of weaknesses. But it's only when it comes to the people's or secondary schools, or federal schools. There are um, things that have been done for South South people, so that have extra benefit because oil is in their place. But when it comes to Igbo, it appears that everything breaks down. Igbos are numerically not strong, but that is not a reason why they should not benefit from the uh, things that others should get, that things should normally come to them. For instance, in the zoning of offices, offices now, in, the, in APC, you see that there's a scramble from other parts of Nigeria, North, West, North East, everybody wants the speaker, everyone wants the, the select presidency. It's not right. Even if the Igbos cannot fight for themselves in this country as it is configured presently, that, is not, that it does not mean that they should be completely sidelined. So leadership, I think leadership, even in APC, even in PD, PDP leadership also demonstrated a contempt for the Southeast people in the manner they chose this presidency. So I think that going forward, there should be, the thing that you don't want others to do to you. Don't do it to others. The thing you don't want others to do to you, don't do it to others. So if you don't want people to oppress you, if you don't want people to take advantage of intellectuals, uh, um, uh, where with us, to take all the positions in universities, all the civil service positions, so you have created quota system, you have created federal character in national... So why don't you extend the same quota system, the federal federal character, to allocation of presidential offices? or allocation of uh, Senate presidency, or speakership. So Igbos um, will not fight for themselves. Igbos should not fight for themselves. Nigeria should fight for Igbos. Nigeria should fight for all parts of Nigeria that are you know, excluded. It is on the basis of fighting for inclusion that will have quota system that admits, especially the Northerners, who are not quite good when it comes to Western education. So why can't you another kind of uh, quota system that accommodated the Southeast in view of their numerical uh, uh, shortcomings. So that what I do to them should go to them. That's how to build inclusion. So, that to build uh, that leads one me country, to my actually. next uh, question, oh. Mr. Chidioke. That leads me to my next question. The race for the Senate presidency is on, with many senators from the Southeast already showing interest. How will you rate the chances of the zone to produce the next Senate president? How do I rate, sir? How will you rate the How chances rate? of the zone to produce the next Senate president? I would really like, I would really like um, 
I really like that the Senate position is thrown open to, to the southeast and the south south. Yes, I really like that the position is thrown open to the southeast and the south south. Yeah. So the south are you part of south. zoning or not? I really like that because. Absolutely. Are you support of zoning. zoning? All right. So how are you yes, rates? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. All right, so let me have you. Uh, what next for Chijo Doha after this electoral loss in the politics of um, Enugu State? I didn't hear you, sorry. I, I would like you. to sorry. ask you, what next for you after this electoral loss in the politics of Enugu State and Nigeria? No, I'm, I'm challenging the outcome of the election. I'm challenging it. I'm going to follow it to the end. So I, I hope that in a few months' time, I'll be sworn in as governor of Enugu State. I have faith in the tribunal. I have faith in the judicial system. And we're going to follow the law. The law as laid out by the Electoral uh, Act. It gives us the leeway to challenge the, uh, an outcome that we don't agree with. I don't agree with the outcome that INEC announced on, uh, sometime in, uh, in March uh, with regards to the outcome of the governorship of Enugu State. It's not in coincidence with the wishes of our people. It's not in consonance with the existing reality, the demographics of who is who in Enugu State politically, House of Reps, uh, uh, House of Assembly, Senatorial. So I don't accept it at all. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go, we have gone to the tribunal now, we have filed our papers, and we are going to follow the law to the end. And I have, I have the faith and the confidence that in the end, justice will be done. And justice means that the mandate that the people of Enugu State gave to LP and the All right, we the wish you the very best of luck uh, regarding. States. According to the, yeah, yeah, yes. Thank you. All right, we wish you the very Thank best you. of luck regarding that. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chijoke Delga. I've been speaking with the governorship candidate of Labour Party in the March 18 election in Enugu State as we discuss uh, Southeast politics. Thank you very much for coming on politics tonight. Thank you so much for having me. You are really brilliant. You are the you. best in us. Thank you. And thank you very much for watching. That marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight. But the conversation continues from here. Get in touch with us on Twitter at CVC News NG and at Olajumoke WO using the hashtag Politics Tonight. We are also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash CVC News Nigeria. I am Olajumoke Olatuji. Good night. Good night, baby. Nothing feels better than knowing you're going to sleep comfortably tonight with no leaks or irritation. Huggies Dry Comfort soft and breathable material keeps my baby comfortable all night long. Huggies, all night dryness and comfort. Try today. Looking fresh for your date? Get even fresher with Close Up. New Close Up Triple Fresh Formula.